Ladies and gentlemen, oh, if you want to get into PC gaming and not trip over and break everything, then you're in the right place. Because in this video, I promise we're going to be a lot more careful. I probably should have cleared up before I started this. And we're going to be looking at this. It is the brand new Omen 17. And this video has been sponsored by Omen and AMD. And we actually have a load of AMD laptops now in this range. And this is called the 17 because obviously it has a 17 inch screen. And this is pretty much aimed for anyone that wants to either get into PC gaming for the first time or obviously if you love gaming laptops and you're looking to upgrade. But yes, this is the Omen 17 and I've been using like Omen laptops for a very long time. I mean at university I actually had one that I used for sort of portable gaming and they've come on a long way since then. Let's open up the box, whack this under our overhead and then see what we have on offer. And despite the fact that I've used 17 and 16 inch laptops for a long, long time, because what I usually use is like a 13 or a 15, they do always seem quite big regardless. And obviously this is gonna be one of the main considerations for you. If you are going for a laptop, then you're gonna to wanna to make sure that you do get one that is the right size. And typically a 17 inch laptop is for anyone really that wants the portability of a machine that you can take with you from place to place. Maybe you live at multiple addresses. Maybe you do wanna to go to university and have something that can still get Game, but obviously is portable when you need it. Whereas if you're after something that's a whole lot more portable, then obviously go for a slightly smaller size. But the benefits that you get are not just in the actual screen itself, but obviously because it has a larger body, you can fit more stuff in here. And usually you get better cooling and a quieter overall system. Let's wet this under our overhead properly though, so you can see what this is all about. Obviously this is an AMD laptop. So you have a Ryzen 7 CPU. It comes all the way from a Ryzen 5 up to a Ryzen 9, depending on what you want. This is a Ryzen 7 8845. HS in this particular machine. As you'd expect, this also comes with a dedicated laptop GPU, with this one being an RTX 4070, but a 4060 and a 4050 is also available if you wanted to spend a little bit less money. But in terms of the overall body itself, I mean, I think it is a really nice, pretty strong, sturdy body, actually. It is made out of plastic. There is a slight amount of wobble to the screen, but with a larger size laptop, this is inevitable, and I do think it actually handles it quite well, all things considered. It's mainly gonna be like, if you bash your desk, obviously you're gonna get it to move a little bit. You're not gonna be gaming whilst this. It's pretty thin actually as well. I mean, a lot of people probably remember uh, gaming laptops like I did from like 10, 15 years ago where they were literally bricks. Whereas the amount of power that you can get inside a pretty modest body is very, very impressive. And because this is a larger size laptop as well, you do get the benefit of having a decent cooling system, but then also some ports at the back as well. So whilst you don't need to use this with an external display, because obviously you've got a 17 inch display on this, it is nice that anything you plug in, most of the stuff or a lot of the stuff really is around the back. So you've got your power in, you've got two USB 3s, USB C, and then your HDMI on the back as well. On the side, we've got more ventilation, full size ethernet jack, your headphone microphone combo jack. And then on the other side, we have just one more USB. I'm gonna take a wild guess here and say that this probably needs charging. And yes, indeed it does. So let's have a look at our power brick. It's not the smallest thing in the world. If you're gonna use this as literally a laptop, a computer that sits on your lap, then obviously be aware you will have to carry this around, but this is gonna consume a lot of power, right? We've got a dedicated GPU, high-end CPU, it's just physics, right? You need to put a lot of watts into the system. But before we actually get this turned on, I like to do my usual thing of actually opening this up and seeing what's inside. So we will grab the PC-centric mouse mat available at pccentric.store. And then in terms of screws, yes, they are actually standard Phillips crossheads. So you don't need like a specialized kit necessarily to get into this, which is always good. I mean, let's actually test that theory. Here's my M.2 screwdriver. Is this the right one? Yes. So let's whack these screws open. And actually fair play to Omen for this because there aren't that many and it does look as if it's gonna be very easy to get into this, which is something that I think puts a lot of people off actually either upgrading or replacing components in their laptop because it can seem like big and scary and like the company don't want you to actually get inside it. So always nice to see. I was going to cut my nails this morning, but now I'm glad that I didn't. There we are. Just a little bit of leverage. And then assuming all of the screws obviously have been taken out. There we are. The whole thing will come off. Let's put that to one side for a second and then actually have a look what we have inside. And it does look as if we have a spare M.2, which is always good. So if you do want to add extra storage, it's very straightforward. Just buy one of these online. And then it really is a case of just unscrewing this slot here. This then removes 
then you'll grab your M.2 drive and just lower this into position, screw it back down and put this back on top. Otherwise, everything else is pretty much as you'd expect. Gaming laptops actually tend to be pretty repairable. I mean, you've got your speakers here on the left and the right. You've got your original M.2 slot here. So if you wanted to swap this out, you can, but obviously you would have to reinstall Windows. Battery pack here, you can obviously just take this out and get a new one in a few years time if you feel the need to. Your DDR5 RAM is here and you have two modules here that you can replace and upgrade if you want to go down that route. Wi-Fi module, and then obviously you've got your GPU and CPU cooling system here. You won't be able to upgrade your graphics card or your CPU, of course, but this is all here. So again, if you needed to maintain anything, should be pretty straightforward and easy to do. The big question though really is, will this go back as easily as it came off? Oh, actually that looks as if it's going on easier. All right. Nice and straightforward. Fast forward an hour or so, and a couple of important things have happened. Firstly, I have this all set up, and it's all now ready to go. And secondly, I have to use my ice cream machine for the first time. It is ridiculously hot today. It's just under 30 degrees in this room. I think it's about 26 and a half, 27, which obviously is going to impact our thermals compared to if we were in the winter. But I do want to run down exactly what we've got. We'll open up the task manager to show you this, and here indeed is our Ryzen 7 8845HS. This actually has a base clock of 3.8 gigahertz, and it goes up to 5. Point one. But if you want to go for something slightly higher spec, you can grab the Ryzen 9 8945HS. And this has a base of four and goes up to 5.2. But both of them actually come with a second gen AI features that can be very useful in applications like Premiere Pro, where you can get some acceleration and it can enable extra AI features. And obviously it does have an APU inside it as well. So if you're doing less graphic intensive tasks, then you can get better battery life. You don't have to use that discrete GPU at all times. It's hybrid, so it goes between whether you need performance or battery life, which is always good. The 16 gig gigabyte of memory that's on this model is indeed running at 5600 mega transfers a second. Our SSD is a terabyte in size and then as you can see at the moment our Ethernet is actually downloading our games at just under about 900 megabits a second. And this bit's actually quite important actually because if we go into our Omen Gaming Hub, currently got this set, well everything's automatic, we haven't actually changed anything at the moment. We have a few different profiles, so you've got balance, performance and eco. If you're playing games and it's the most intensive stuff, I would recommend changing it to performance, which you do just by hitting this button or I believe you can set it to maybe change depending on the scenario. But you go into gaming options and then I would also advise that you drag this little bar here called Smart Performance Gain from zero watts to 20 watts. And essentially this will ensure that uh, whatever component needs more power will get it. So some games are gonna be more GPU heavy, others are gonna be more CPU heavy. So if you turn this on, you'll find that in certain instances you can get better performance, which is always good. But our CPU temperature at the moment is around about 59, 60 degrees or so. As I say, very hot in here, but this is whilst downloading a game, which when you've got that sort of download speed is surprisingly intense actually on both the SSD and the CPU. So not only do you have your performance control that obviously goes between those different modes, you've got your lighting control, which can actually do RGB for the keyboard, which is nice. But you have a few other things like network boosting that obviously shows you what processes are actually consuming your internet. Uh, system vitals that will show you everything that you need to know about your system. But then I quite like this optimizer section. So you've got booster, and you have cleaner, and both of these are useful in their own right. Booster is probably gonna be the more useful one for most people, so if like an application is open, it's using loads of RAM, then it can actually kind of suspend those tasks or kind of like neatly tuck everything away so you can get more resources actually for your games, which can be quite useful if something is going on in the background but doesn't need to be. And then you do also have this cleaner option here that can scan your disk and essentially see if there's anything on there that doesn't need to be on there. That can be used to free up some space for more games, which is pretty useful. But there's loads of different things inside the Omen Gaming Hub, so I would advise that if you do grab one of these that you do check it out. You know what? I was wrong, by the way. I have just checked the thermostat and it's actually 29 degrees in here, which is why I'm so sweaty. You can probably smell me through the lens. But whilst we've got the final few games downloading, I just did want to talk briefly about the screen options because you've got two really for this. You've got this one, which is the more affordable option. This is 1080p, 144 hertz, and it does have variable refresh rate between 48 and 144, which is really useful because if you're playing a more AAA title and your frame rate's not quite so high, then it can reduce the stutter and tearing that you see in games, which is excellent. But if you did want to step this up a little bit more, then you can actually go for a 1440p option, which is not only obviously high resolution, but it does also go up to 240 hertz, which is pretty cool. If you're playing more esportsy titles, obviously this is going to be the most useful because you will find it a lot easier to hit those frame rates. I would advise using like image scaling techniques as well in certain titles to be able to get there if you're not like running esports titles that can get there naturally. But it's nice to have both options. Essentially, I think I would say if you're going to get an external monitor, 1080p is absolutely fine. But if you're going to use this for the sole like screen that you'd be using, which obviously when it's a larger display does make sense, 1440p would definitely be nice. But I mean, to be honest, it's just nice to have two different options so you can pick 
pick the one that's right for you. But ladies and gentlemen, I'm really pleased to say that all of the games have now been downloaded and we can actually start our gaming tests. And as you can clearly see, the first title that we are going to test is some Fortnite. And I've got this running in performance mode and we've got it generally speaking to what I'd call high settings, which is mostly high across the board. Lumen is disabled because that's very intense and to be honest, in a game like Fortnite isn't really required. And we are using TSR in games as well, which is rendering this at a slightly lower resolution and then upscaling it. And as you can see, we're getting a pretty good balance to image quality and frame rate, around about 100 FPS or so. Uh, obviously, there are loads of ways to increase this, by the way. If you did want to like lower down the quality, maybe play it in the like performance rendering mode or something, you can get way higher than this. But in terms of balance, around about 100 FPS, especially with the variable refresh rate, I think is probably about right. And on a screen like this as well, which is larger, so you can actually see a little bit further into the distance, and obviously you can take everything in because you've got that little bit more immersion, I think this is a pretty nice balance, to be fair. So that was Fortnite, but how about we press on to something a little bit different now with some Apex Legends. And this is a game that is arguably a little bit lighter to run at its more default settings unless you're going to use that Fortnite performance rendering mode that we spoke about earlier. I think it's a really nice balance game actually. This used to be my title right? I used to play this I think religiously for two years on the trot. But here we are today and we are in the middle of a firefight. You catch me at quite a good time. Uh, this is running at a series of medium high and very high settings actually. I'll show you in just a second. But as you can see we're getting higher than the frame rate of the screen around about 170 to 180 FPS or so. So even smoother than before and this is one of those titles that if you were going to go for the 1440p option I would still advise using like an image scaler just to sort of render it at maybe 1080p and then have it upscaled but you could definitely get a very good frame rate here and you'll be able to utilize a lot of that screen at the moment about 140 to 150 fps and we can actually turn our attention to the thermals as well while we're here and I must admit I'm actually pretty pleasantly surprised at what we're getting, because it's around about 70 degrees on the GPU. I haven't actually turned on the CPU. That's not deliberate, I promise. Uh, we'll open that up in just a second. Yes, that was inevitable. Uh, we're going to our gaming hub and what we're hitting around about 85, 87 on the CPU, which for a gaming laptop is fairly normal, to be honest. I would prefer that it was slightly lower than that, but I've got this on a mouse mat, and as I say, it is 29 degrees in here. So I'd say this is fairly reasonable, but if you are gonna use this over obviously years and years, it probably will need dusting just to keep its performance and the temperatures away from the 90s. So those are our multiplayer titles then, but how about we crank things up to some AAA, and the title that we are going to be using here is actually Starfield. And as you can see, I have played a fair bit of it, but I've not got like crazy far into it. It's just too many games, guys. Too many games. I've spent four and a half days in Team Raider Remastered, but let's not worry about that. Let's focus on Starfield. And I'm genuinely very impressed actually with how this laptop is able to handle it because we're pretty much getting around about 60 FPS. And this is a very good example of what you can expect with this laptop because it's 1080p, but importantly, you've got that variable refresh rate from 48 and up in the more intense titles in things like Starfield means you get a really nice smooth experience despite the fact that you've not got that minimum of 60 like you'd need on a fixed refresh rate panel. The game looks great too. We are using AMD's FSR Suite. FSR Suite? Isn't it Fidelity FX Suite? Anyway, uh, this is actually running FSR 3, and there is also frame generation in this, but we don't have that turned on at the moment, but I'll show you that in just a second. But genuinely, I am very, very impressed with what you have on offer here, because obviously this is the sort of title that is going to properly stress your system. It's the type of game that you will run a run at around about 60 FPS. Uh, so the fact that you can do this on a portable machine that's relatively speaking fairly affordable, I think, is definitely a very, very good thing. GPU as well, still running around about 73 degrees or so, so definitely no issues there. But if we do go into the settings, I can also show you the frame generation feature. So there's our FSR3. Uh, we've got our render resolution set to 66% and then pretty much everything else too high as you can see. And then below that, we have our open standard of frame generation. So we can turn this on. And then as I say, whenever I'm testing frame gen of any kind, essentially this is more of like a frame smoothing tool. So it does a really good job of increasing your frame rate in the way that the image actually looks. Uh, it uses AI to actually have like rendered frames sandwiched between these generated frames. And it does work very well. I mean, our frame rate is actually around about 110 FPS, is that? 106? So it's definitely a whole lot smoother, especially on this screen. Uh, but it will add a tiny bit of latency to your system as well, which bear in mind, we already had 60 FPS, I wouldn't say as a concern, but I wouldn't wanna use any form of frame gen in like a multiplier title or something like that, because obviously it does increase the latency in the pipeline a little bit. But yeah, look at that, that is not too shabby at all, is it? Around about 100 to 110 FPS in Starfield, high settings with FSR3 enabled. Pretty darn cool. And let's 
let's just check our CPU temperature again, because I don't want you to think I'm hiding anything from you. Uh, 67 degrees, and I will also say that for some reason in Afterburner, CPU temperature doesn't appear. That's why it wasn't in the top. Again, not trying to hide anything at all. That is not too shabby, is it? The package overall, I'd say, is actually relatively impressive. I mean, I like the fact that it's not massive, and actually the amount of noise that it's made throughout the test, I'd like to think you haven't heard it through the microphone. Because obviously it does make noise, it is a gaming laptop, but compared to the smaller ones, it makes less noise and it's not that horrible, like, whirry, really high-pitched noise that you can get as well. So I've got nothing against smaller laptops. It, it, as we said at the start of the video, it depends what you need, really. And I'd say that if you are looking at the Omen range, they've got a lot of good offerings. But if you do want something that is mainly going to be sitting at home in the first place, then going for a larger one does make sense because you're going to get the better cooling, better thermals, and obviously you've got a bigger screen anyway, so you'll be able to enjoy your game more. But the question very much goes out to you guys on this. What do you make of the Omen 17? Is this the sort of thing that you've been after or are you a preferer of smaller laptops or maybe desktops? I'd love to hear from you so let us know down in the comment section below. If you have any questions about this device then I'll do my best to answer them. Let me know down in the comment section below. But smash the like button if you've enjoyed this, get yourself subscribed and we'll catch you in the next one.